Okay, it comes up. It says you're live right now. It gives you a picture of a hair messed up. And then you get to sit here and think what's going to happen on the scope today. So Cheryl Townsley's on. Rhonda's on. Oh, my gosh. We're starting to create some habits with you guys. I'm starting to create some habits with me. So good morning. Good morning, everybody. Today I put up Open Line Friday. I felt like I was supposed to get out and go for a walk this morning. Good morning, Nancy. Um, I felt like I was supposed to just get up and go for a walk today because we've got um, the big snowstorm blowing again. We're supposed to get five, six, seven inches, maybe even somebody said two feet of snow at our house this weekend. So it was warm enough to get out this morning. Good morning, Stan, and go for a walk. And uh, so back in the house and ready to roll with our call this morning. Good morning, Deborah. Deborah reminded me of how important it is to show up at 8 o'clock because she says, Forrest, I'm here waiting for you. Every, you know, the lighting is not good on me today. Wow. Okay. Let's see if we change the light here a little bit. That's a little better. The lighting is really interesting. Okay. Um, so what, anyway, so I was walking today and I was coming up with all sorts of great things to talk about. Good morning, Claire. Thanks for joining us. That's really, you know what it is. There's different light coming in from the window. Okay, well, we're just being distracted. Good morning, Al. Hey, Al, don't forget you're supposed to send hearts. Everybody sends hearts except for my friend Al, so Al, don't forget to do that. Good morning, Rhonda. So today we're going to do Open Line Friday. I had a couple things that I wanted to, that seemed like we should um, have some conversation on today for the next few minutes, but I know that probably stuff is stirring in you guys too, so if you've got thoughts, good morning, Sharon. If you've got stuff you want to talk about, just type it in and we'll throw it into the conversation in the mix, and I'll throw out a couple of things. So... Um, most important to me today is to share with you Cheryl's webinar coming on Tuesday. It's on our Facebook page, went out in our newsletter. All of you should be getting our newsletter. Um, her upcoming webinar, Overcoming Overwhelm, I think is going to be some of the best material she's produced because it's simple, it's to the point, and it deals with real issues that people have getting through each day. Hey, thanks, Sharon, for inviting followers. Yes, you can invite followers. Hit the little man down below and share. Swipe up and share, swipe right and share, and that will start to grow our community. So anyway, that webinar is coming up. You do need to go register for it. So I got that page set up. You can register at um, CherylTownsley.com forward slash overwhelm. CherylTownsley.com forward slash overwhelm. You can register. I think the webinar will hold about 100 people, and that's what we had on the last one. So please get registered for that. Share it with folks. It's going to be about 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes. Thank you, Darlene. Um, it's really going to be a great event, so we'll be working to get that ready this weekend. Okay, until so you guys decide to engage in Open Line Friday. Uh, good morning, Molly. Good to have you on the call today. Thanks for your encouragement yesterday. So a couple things. I was out walking today, and so I thought, you know, first thing I do when I go for a walk is I do my gratitude. And I've been working on my memory, trying to get memorization going. So I've been adding memorization into my mix but for me, memorization, you know, memorizing scripts, dance routines, that stuff is, is a challenge. But I've got about half of my, uh, what time on Tuesday, Al? It's going to be at 6 o'clock Mountain Time, 6 o'clock Mountain Time. You get registered and you get the email notifications from GoToWebinar on that. So I've been working on memorizing um, Song of Songs 7, 1 through 5 because that has become, um, it is on the Facebook page. There's a link for that on there and we'll get more up over the weekend, Sharon. So I've been working on memorizing Song of Songs 7, 1 through 5 uh, because that's gone into this category called my um, inheritance scripture, my, my prophetic scripture. My, it's, it's like it's an inheritance to me that I believe the Lord's given to me. So I started working through the memory part of that as I was out walking today. And it was really interesting because there was something refreshing and alive about digging into my mind and bringing back the scripture that is my focus for this year. And I think there's probably a focus for all of you if you're, if you're reading the Bible or you find a saying or something that matters to you. There will be something that speaks to your heart. And the first time I read this one, I just said, this is the Lord's word for me this year. So I begin memorizing it, but I haven't been speaking it memorized. So today as I was walking, I began the memory process of bringing it back up. And it was very refreshing to watch how my mind was working as it wrapped around that. And as I pulled it from memory, and as I shared it with myself out loud while I was walking, and the only frustration I had was that I didn't know all of it, even though I've read it hundreds of times. So I just want to encourage you guys that memorization, probably a good thing to think about if it's the right time. I've been working on it all year, but today it was became apparent that doing that would be good. I love those hearts. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, the folks that are putting those up. Okay, so that's number one for Open Line Friday. Number two thing that came to me today is, you know, we talked about this yesterday. Do when you know that there's something you're supposed to do, when there's a call, a purpose, or something on your life that you're supposed to engage in and do, 
Do you have the ability and the capacity to maintain the discipline and the consistency to complete the course? And I really struggled with that this week. Good morning, Pam. Great to have you on the call. So um, do you have the discipline to maintain the consistency to go there? And what that really boiled down to me for, for me was, do I believe that what I'm doing matters? And do I believe that I can grow and develop the skill to create and do what matters to me? Uh, another way of looking at that is, do you really believe in what you're teaching? Do you really believe in what you're teaching? And what I'm seeing is that the things that I'm sharing with you guys are some of the most important that I'm sharing to me right now. I'm, you know, it's a learning process, a growing curve for me. But do I believe in them enough to actually really go ahead and master them and take them from here to here and then to get this whole process integrated in? And so what I'm seeing is that that gets challenged on a daily basis. It got challenged last night. I fell asleep on the couch at nine o'clock, woke up at 10 o'clock and realized that I needed to get a newsletter done. So at 10 o'clock when you're exhausted and you've got to get the newsletter done and then you oversleep in the morning and then you need to show up for your Periscope because you made a commitment for that. You go out for your walk and you think, am I really gonna maintain the commitment to this process to what I'm doing? So a couple of things that, I'm, that I know are true, that I know I'm developing, that I know I'm growing in. Uh, number one, the philosophy that the tortoise always wins. Uh, number two, not quitting on your dreams. And the big one for me is all over my whiteboard and all over everything I've been teaching and sharing with everybody is the concept that everybody matters. You know, everybody has a purpose and a destiny in them. And everybody should have the opportunity to develop that call, develop their personality, develop their skill, and then be able to go out and share it with the world. And not only share it, but know that at the end of their days, that who they were and what they did made the world better. So what happened yesterday is I was blessed by, uh, so well, anyway, but back up. So that's like really easy to say, but do we really believe it? Will we invest in it? Will we put our time into it? And will we run with it? Because for 20 years of my life in the network marketing industry, there's always that little subtle piece of I'm going to invest in you, but I'm really hoping that, good morning, Maya. Thanks for joining us today. I'm going to invest in you, but you really need to sign up for my deal. You need to be in my group. You need to be selling product. You need to be doing something in order for me to engage with you. And now I always knew that was wrong, but within the context of that industry, it was always a challenge to overcome. Uh, battery power is going down. We'll just hit close on that. Good morning, Forrest. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Forrest. Good morning, Maya. So the question becomes, can I hang in there with it? So yesterday, in other words, am I willing to invest in this piece that one person matters? So yesterday, right after the call, I got two of you reached out and connected with me. I had two. I actually had three calls yesterday from people who just wanted to talk about who they were, what they're doing, how this how these Periscope broadcasts have made a difference for them. And so it was a big chunk of time. And in my heart, it felt really good. But then when I pulled up and looked at my to-do list, I thought, oh, that wasn't on the schedule today. It wasn't on the schedule today. So do I really believe that if I'm steady and diligent, that if I help one person at a time succeed, regardless of what they succeed at, do I really believe that if I never quit on that, that we're gonna build this community, we're gonna build this team, that who we are makes a difference, that what we're doing is going to make a difference. Because it's so easy. You see, at the same time yesterday, I had four people, yeah, four people yesterday, contacted me, wanted me to jump back into my old industry, told me how great I was, how wonderful it would be, how fast we could make money, all of this other stuff. And I allowed my mind to go there for a little while. Well, I actually probably wasted 15 or 20 minutes of my day thinking about those offers, when what I needed to do was simply say, no, that's not what I'm doing right now. And that's actually what I ended up sending the message back. But I, I was distracted by my previous life of trying to be a rabbit, of trying to be the hare. And what I really have got to do is there was time for all of the things I did yesterday. If I'd left out the distractions from the things that weren't, that I knew that I'm not supposed to do. In other words, my whiteboard has everything on it that I'm supposed to be doing. And I had two things that had to get done yesterday. One got done at midnight. So I think I'm rambling a little bit on that. We probably ought to stop rambling. But hopefully that's making some sense to you guys. Give me some feedback if that's making some sense. So clarity and focus on do we believe? That's my dad. That's your dad. Okay, yes, he's a hero every day. <laughs> it is. Do we believe that what we know is true and are we going to act on it or are we going to continue to be distracted by other things? Will we maintain the discipline and the consistency that's right, thanks, Sharon, at least it got done. Will we maintain the discipline and the consistency to stay in the game? You know, I'm so, I'm really proud of myself because I've done this every day for 10 days now. 
The biggest thing I've learned this last two weeks is that one, what my voice is, is actually making a difference for some of you, for all of you that are on here. Some of you become regular followers. So a huge encouragement in that. So a learning curve there. I've also learned that every day I can get a little bit better. I've watched each of these scopes. Every day they've gotten better. I've been encouraged that they're getting better. So what that means that is that in reality, old dogs can learn new tricks. They can have fun learning their new tricks. And as they learn their new tricks and their new skills, they can actually go out and make a difference in the world. They can bring a smile to somebody's face. They can make a difference for somebody. Old dogs can't learn new tricks. That's just a, a bad way to look at things, you know, because we have a calling and a purpose on our lives that matters. And I'll close with this story. Uh, two weeks ago, I, I did just a little bit of research about being 60 and heading into being 70. And the piece that hit me was my, I took a look at Ronald Reagan because I saw, I saw a reminder that Ronald Reagan was 70 when he became president. Ronald Reagan spent his entire life getting ready to become president. And I'll suspect that most of his life it wasn't on his agenda to become president. So he became president at 70 and had a dramatic impact on the world. Well, I look at my own life and I go, I'm 61, coming up on 62. And you start to think, this old dog can't learn new tricks. He can't do new things. You're supposed to be retired. And yet when I put that in perspective, I have, before I'm 70, there's, uh, there's eight years, a little over eight years before I'm 70. So if Ronald Reagan did his most significant work at age 70, and he probably wasn't planning on that in his 50s or 40s. I know there came a period when he was. But what can you take the next 10 years of your life to prepare for? So we don't know what we're going to be doing in 10 years. But what do we need to be prepared to do in 10 years? Because in eight years, if I look at how much I've grown just the last two weeks doing this, if this growth curve just keeps going, where will this growth curve take me in the next eight years so that I can be prepared when I'm 70 to do the most significant work of my life? So for each of you, whether you're 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60, we'll close with this. What is it that you can be doing today? And a little bit tomorrow, and a little bit the next day, what can you be doing in your life to prepare yourself to do your greatest work in 10 years, or in 20 years, or in 30 years, or in a year, or in a month? But we've got to be in the preparation stage so that when somebody says, hey, it's time to be president, or whatever it is, you'll be ready. Yes, it's season of preparation. Thanks, Claire. It's knowing what season you're in, preparing for the next season. Of course, it's going to help in your 20s. The benefit to being in your 20s is you've got... You've got 50 years to prepare for being 70, actually. I mean, um, it's like you've got so much time to prepare. The key is our trajectory. And on one hand, it's so easy when you're 60 to say there's no time left. And yet, when I look at 10 years, that's a lot of time to prepare to do something significant. So that's the encouragement for me. When you're 20, you're going, I've got 40 years to prepare for something. Key is putting yourself on trajectory moving into that. So, okay, we're a little long today. Uh, thank you all for the hearts. Um, it was on the Nancy agenda for him to be president, so what does Cheryl want me to do in 10 years? Okay, the good news is Cheryl does not want me to be president in 10 years. Um, there we go, somebody six, six years until 70. Six years is a lot of time. I'm not sure what Cheryl wants me to do when I'm 70, but I hope she's patiently supporting me, patiently loving me, patiently encouraging me, because what she really wants me to do is she wants me to fulfill and live out my purpose and my destiny. And I've allowed, you know, actually we talked about trajectory, I allowed a lot of the trajectory stuff to go like this. You know, you got your ups, you got your downs, you got your ups and your downs. And we can look at those ups and downs and go, oh my gosh, I'm in the bottom of a down cycle. So none of the rest of this matters. But here's the key to this little process. Every time we go through one of these, we have the opportunity to learn. And it's bringing all of that together. It's called convergence. Lance Wall now talks about it. It's bringing together all of those experiences, bundling them up and saying, I have acquired a lot of wisdom in my life. Good morning, Pam. Um, I've got a lot of wisdom in my life. I've learned a lot. What am I going to do with that to multiply it, to grow it, and to move me in to my future and to doing the things that I need to do? So when I die, I'll leave in a, a, a legacy. So when I die, I, I know that I've made a difference in the world and my friends know I've made a difference in their life. There's so much that each of us can do to bring to the world to know that whatever our gifting is, whatever our potential is, whatever we're called to do, the key is that we develop it, we bring it to the world, we share it, and we know that because we lived in our own little way, we made the world hugely, hugely better in some way. So, 
Happy Friday, everybody. We're going to go get ready for the snowstorm. Fortunately, we have no appointments on Saturday or Sunday, so we're going to relax and enjoy the weekend and watch the snow come down and maybe wish that we were in Hawaii or at least wish we were in Denver where it's not snowing so hard. Um, but anyway, we put it, we're going to rest and enjoy the week, and it's been a long week, so we're going to enjoy the week. And if you just joined us, a reminder to go to CherylTownsley.com forward slash overwhelm and um, register for Cheryl's webinar on Tuesday, Overcoming Overwhelm the Easy Way. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome. And uh, so make sure you register for that. If you're on Cheryl's Facebook page of mine, you can share the link on that. We will appreciate your support in filling that up and making it an awesome event. So everybody have a blessed week. I'm going to say goodbye and in the Periscope. See you on Monday. I'll see you on Monday.